This uh, case study is of a core asset base for a product line, not an entire product line. It started life as a toolkit concept and gradually evolved into an asset base to uh, support a uh, full-blown product line. The uh, control channel toolkit is aimed at supporting the ground operations of satellite command and control. So control channels are the communication paths between the ground and a satellite. And this uh, control channel contract is something that was let by the National Reconnaissance Office to the uh, Raytheon Company. Actually, at the time of the original contract, it was to the uh, Hughes Company, which subsequently merged with Raytheon. So we refer to it as a, um, a Raytheon case study. So the idea in the ground station software is that you uh, maintain the, the health and status of the satellite. That's the primary concern with uh, this uh, control channel toolkit. So it's independent of whatever payload is actually flying on the reconnaissance satellite. This is all about coming up with a toolkit to support ground operations with respect to being able to send a signal and receive a telemetry stream in return and being able to plan for future contacts and so on and archive results for later analysis, all dealing with the, the flying of the satellite and the maintaining of the satellite in the correct orbit. And then there's a separate part of the ground and the space segment that deals with whatever mystery packages are flying on board that satellite. Yes, all that payload stuff. So this is actually uh, a, an attempt by the National Reconnaissance Office to save money on the ground portion by not paying over and over again on these different satellite contracts for essentially the same kinds of ground operations. And the ground operations are divided roughly into two major categories of what they, or at least what the CCT people called execution and planning. Execution is when you are in line of sight contact with the satellite and you can actually send a signal and receive something uh, in return. And the closest this portion of the ground station software gets to the payload is that there's something called an OBP onboard processor instruction sort of simulator that allows you to assess the, the tasking and the loading on the spacecraft bus and make plans for uh, changes to that. But otherwise, it's largely all about keeping the satellite in a correct orbit sending commands, receiving uh, telemetry streams in return. And then in the planning stage, when you are out of direct contact with the satellite, you plan for mission changes or maneuver changes. You might want to adjust the orbit of the satellite to focus over a particular area on the planet, or you might want to schedule future real-time contacts with the satellite. So you have these two broad categories of real-time operation and non-real-time or offline operation that the uh, control channel supports. And this whole idea of coming up with a toolkit to support ground operations had its roots in a couple of earlier efforts that were not exactly working out as planned. There was a satellite program effort called DCCS, the distributed command and control system that was an Air Force project, the first attempt to uh, use object technology. And SSCS, the standard spacecraft control segment project, was an attempt to create a set of generalized requirements from a number of different satellite programs. So these were in their early stages, and they were running into problems. And the National Reconnaissance Office commissioned a study to look at what can we learn from these efforts? How can we improve the overall development path for these particular efforts? And can we 
learn some lessons and create some reusable artifacts that would work across these multiple different satellite projects. In fact, SSCS was already a, uh, a prototype reuse effort in the sense that it was looking at generalizing the requirements for the ground segment of a number of different satellite projects. So when the NRO looked at the commonality of requirements across these and across another classified project um, that we refer to as Spacecraft C2 because we are not allowed even to talk about the name of it, although CCT itself is an unclassified effort. But DCCS, SSCS, and the product known as Spacecraft C2 turned out to have anywhere from 49 to 89, or the figures I remember, 49 to 89 percent commonality of features across the different categories being addressed by these um, proposed uh, toolkit components. So the NRO decided that there is, there is a case to be made here for creating a set of reusable assets for these efforts, and we have a candidate customer, the Spacecraft C2 satellite, uh, as our first proof of concept of this. And they brought in the SEI as advisors on this effort, and one of the first influences we had on this was changing the mindset away from the toolkit idea to you really need to have an architecture supporting this. You can't just have a set of components and hope that they all work together. So what CCT ended up uh, producing, and I'll say more about what each of these means, but essentially the generalized requirements and domain specifications, that's all tied up in what we would now call the practice area of understanding relevant domains and doing the commonality and variability analysis and also looking at both the functional and quality attributes that would influence the architecture that was uh, produced. They also created an architecture with some prompting from the SEI and a set of reusable components that were part of the original toolkit, set of test procedures, a development environment for doing this, and a, a representation of this that could be carried over to other efforts that would be required to reuse the CCT assets, and what they called a reuse guide to support the people who would be required to take the control channel toolkit and incorporate it into the complete satellite command and control system. The idea was that the government was going to create this reusable set of artifacts and then have contractors bidding on the full satellite command and control system take the CCT assets as government furnished information and incorporate that into the ground station software so that they didn't end up paying over and over again for the same kind of ground station functionality. So in terms of the um, product line structure, you have the uh, Raytheon contractor building the CCT asset base, and then product building in the product line would be done by whatever contractor gets the complete satellite command and control system. And here's a representation of that. You have CCT development organization within Raytheon creating the core assets, product development being done by satellite contractors, and a combination of technical management and organizational management being done by the NRO and Raytheon. The NRO, the organization that flies and operates these reconnaissance satellites, is an organization that officially at least didn't exist until about the early 90s. But they started to, um, I don't know, loosen up uh, on the security, especially since a lot of the kinds of imagery that they were processing didn't need to be classified at really high levels of security. So they saw an opportunity to bring in more customers and more contractors into this world. The CCT contract itself is a completely unclassified contract. And they saw 
you know, they, they could achieve some of their goals with respect to saving money on these satellite contracts by opening it up to more uh, customer organizations and providing a set of reusable assets in at least the non-classified arena. And Raytheon, or uh, Hughes initially and then Raytheon, was selected as the, uh, the prime contractor on this because of their domain expertise in this area of satellite command and control. And also, I think at the time, they were rated at level three on the CMMI scale. So they were used to following disciplined processes. Um, so they got the contract to create the toolkit that became a core asset base for a product line. And the Raytheon team itself was relatively small. And in terms of the organizational structures that we looked at in the um, structuring the organization module, this would be an example of the development department model of Jan Bosch, where everybody within the Raytheon organization reports to the Raytheon project manager, Jeff Shaw. And within that structure, then, they created teams of people creating the architecture and the components and doing the testing and an internal organization that created a test product that would mimic what a real customer reuser would have to do to take the CCT assets and incorporate them into a ground station application. And all of the people involved in this were in the same office just outside Denver with a very small amount of uh, subcontracting. So essentially, it's small organization all in the same location, which made it very convenient for us, because when we got involved, we tried out an early form of what became the product line technical probe in this organization. And we also used an early form of what became the architecture trade-off analysis method uh, in this organization as well.